Welcome to this edition of Clackamas County Master Gardeners 10-Minute University. In this segment, I will be talking about some common pests and diseases in fall and winter. When discussing these problems, I will give you a description, the cause of the problem, and the solution. This will include some diseases, some insects, and some environmental problems. Powdery mildew is a fungal disease that's common in late summer and early fall. High humidity, warm temperatures, and dense plantings all promote this fungal growth. You can find powdery mildew on many types of plants, including ornamentals and edibles. The fungus starts out with tiny white powdery spots on the leaves and stems, but as time goes by, it can progress and cover the entire plant. Here are a few of the ways to prevent powdery mildew. If available, plant resistant varieties or resistant cultivars. Plant in full sun, avoid dense plantings, and practice crop rotation in the vegetable garden. Tree flagging can sometimes be a concern. In the fall, you may notice that much of the inner foliage of your evergreen trees have become brown and dead looking, but the branch tips still remain green. This can be caused by stress factors such as insufficient watering, hot winds, construction damage, poor, poor planting procedures, or recent plantings. The dead foliage is usually blown or washed away during the winter, and by spring, the tree resumes its healthy appearance. Many people worry when they see this happening, but this is a natural process and not caused by a disease or a pest. Additional irrigation may be needed during the summer to help lessen the die out. And also avoid disturbing the soil inside the root zone, but be aware that the root zone can go way beyond the tree's drip line. Box elder bugs, stink bugs, and spiders, oh my. This is an unfortunate occurrence in many homes in early fall. When the air temperature drops, the box elder bugs and the stink bugs congregate on the outside of your home and work their way inside through openings. They're not causing any damage to your home. They're just looking for a warm place to spend the winter. The spiders are not after you, so don't worry. They're just in there looking for a mate. If you're not happy with these critters in your home, which of course none of us are, here are some solutions. Prevent injury into your home through doors and windows and attic vents, etc. This may include repairing screens, caulking around doors, windows, and attic vents. Remove the bugs with a vacuum or by hand, but remember stink bugs do stink, so it's probably better to drop them into soapy water to avoid exposure to the smell. And transport your spiders back outside or dispose of them if you need to. Fall webworms are actually not worms at all, but are caterpillars, which are the larval stage of a native species of tiger moth. Many people consider them to be a pest, but they are primarily just a cosmetic nuisance. You'll find these caterpillars inside of a gauzy looking tent where they're eating the leaves, but only the leaves that are inside the tent area. The solution for these guys are to look for tents in late summer and control before significant damage is done. They rarely cause significant damage, but are considered unsightly. Be sure to prune off the infected branches, but when you do, please avoid spreading the caterpillars into other places. Destroy the caterpillars by submerging them in soapy water. Anyone who gardens will probably have a problem with slugs and snails. Several insects make holes in plants, but you can identify slug and snail damage by the irregular holes with the smooth edges, and sometimes you'll be able to find the slime trails on the plant. A combination of techniques will be most effective at reducing slug and snail populations. Traps or barriers or baits may work and encourage beneficial predators by planting a lot of different plants around your garden and home area. The best time for long-term control is to treat the whole garden in autumn. This way there will be fewer adult slugs and snails to lay their eggs. Red thread is a fungus that causes circular irregular yellow patches in your lawn that then become brown and dead looking during humid autumn weather. If you look closely, you'll notice that the grass blades have a pinkish color. Red thread rarely kills the lawn, but it can be unsightly. Red thread is more severe on lawns low in vigor and when nitrogen is needed. So fertilize with a quick release nitrogen fertilizer, try to prevent dress strouse if possible, and like I mentioned, red thread is more severe on lawns in low vigor and when nitrogen is living. And be careful if you walk on your lawn with white slippers or they may end up pink. Oh, the dreaded pantry pest. The Master Gardener Office gets a lot of calls during the winter months about pantry pests. 
People are quite disgusted when they find these in their homes. Pantry pests can include moths, beetles, and weevils. These insects are found inside dry goods such as cereal, flour, dried fruits, pet foods, bird seed, rice, and a number of other items. If you're having a problem with these pests, inspect all your food containers and discard those you found to be infested. Thoroughly clean your shelves and storage bins and store your food in solid containers with tight lids. These insects can chew through plastic bags and, plas and paper bags. Stopping the infestation takes persistent effort of monitoring, removing, and cleaning. This problem does not necessarily mean that your home is dirty or unclean. Many of these critters are brought into your home in store-bought produce or old forgotten ones. Crane flies are a type of fly that many people call mosquito eaters, but that's not what they are. It is actually the larval stage that causes problems in the lawns. The larvae hatch in late summer and feed on the roots of the turf grass December to May. The affected turf areas thin out severely in early spring when vigorous growth should be beginning. We do have a native crane fly, but the turf damage is caused by the European crane fly. Begin monitoring for thin patches of turf grass in December. Problems begin when one square foot contains more than 25 larvae. You can slice off a section of turf to look for the larva. Keep a healthy lawn and please avoid saturated soils. Practice sustainable gardening to enlist the help of natural enemies such as birds, beetles, bats, and frogs. Winter injury is an environmental problem. You may experience broken branches, dead flower buds, brown leaves, cracks in barks, or dead roots. Winter injury on your plants can be caused by several factors such as extreme cold, bright days with frozen soil, drying winds, snow load on branches, water freezing in bark, or early or late frost. The result of winter injury sometimes takes months or years to appear because plants do have a reserve that can prolong their life. If you find your plants damaged, prune out dead branches and leaves, make proper pruning cuts to prevent disease entry, check cracks in tree bark for insects, but remember, before removing a plant, be sure that it's already dead. You may have noticed that I did not give a lot of chemical recommendations. That's because it's important to learn about integrated pest management, also called IPM, and use those strategies. So here's what IPM is all about. It's a strategy to prevent and suppress pets with a minimum impact on human health, the environment, and non-target organisms. What it is, it is a decision-making process that uses regular monitoring to decide if and when treatments are needed to control a pest, then uses a variety of tactics to help keep the pest numbers low. This is how IPM works. Monitor the plant. If you see a problem, you'll see it at the very beginning. Identify the pest. Is it caused by an insect, a disease, or is it just an environmental problem? Establish an acceptable injury level. Maybe you're okay with a little bit of damage. And use all available strategies, which include cultural, that can be planting resistant varieties, making sure you're putting the right plant in the right place, keeping plants healthy, and keeping the garden clean and sanitary. Then there's physical strategies. Maybe you have insects on a plant, then just spray it with a hard stream of water to get the insects off use proper pruning, and maybe you need to use some row covers to protect those plants. Biological strategies will help you encourage beneficials into your garden. If you do need to use a chemical, please use the easiest and least toxic, and please follow the label. This is why IPM works. One slug can lay up to 300 eggs. By monitoring and dispatching a slug early will save you a lot of problems in the spring. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of 10 Minute University and that you may want to learn more about integrated pest management.